everyone! Welcome to Bead Table Wednesday. I'm Heather Powers, your host, and it really helps to do a video if I press the play button or record button. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse, for uh, straightening me out there. All right, welcome! We're going to make a bracelet today. I'm super excited. And new here, I'm Heather Powers from Humble Beads, and I'm a bead maker, jewelry designer, author, illustrator, and your all-around creative muse. And it's my job every week to get those beads off your bead table and into some jewelry. And so hopefully today's project will inspire you. This is what we're going to be making today, which is the floral tapestry bracelet. It's a mix of wire working and knotting with some wax linen, and it's a mix of lots of check glass elements, copper, and one of my dogwood humble beads out of polymer clay. So if you're here, say hello. If you have your kit and you're ready to create, let me know you're ready. I think we're going to have lots of fun today. So definitely want to hear from you guys before I officially get started. All right, here we go. <laughs> Hi, Diana. Welcome. Glad to see you here. Uh, yeah, we're excited to get this project done. I I really love it. It's a really fun one to wear. It's a fun one to create. It's perfect for summer. I'm all about everything in the garden right now. And this project definitely is capturing that. Hello, Angela. Nice to have you here. All right, so here's our bracelet that we're going to be making today. And I've done a little bit of the work ahead of time so that you guys don't have to watch me put together... 18 little tiny beaded links. <laughs> so I, I got a little prep work done before we get started and then I'll just show you an example with two of the little beads and I'm going to show you how to curve this little guy and then we're going to wire wrap him and then put the bracelet all together. Fun, easy, this is definitely a beginner skill project. You don't have to be uh, advanced at all, which is a really nice way to do a fun summer design, isn't it, you guys? All right, so let me say hi to people that are jumping in. We have, oh, so many of you just zipping right by. Hi, Candy, Joellen, Lynn, Mary Ellen, Susan Dythman, Brenda, Shakita, Dawn, watching from uh, YouTube. Hello, welcome. Cheryl, Faye, who is taking a break from cleaning. And Faye, I definitely um, recommend making jewelry over cleaning anytime. <laughs> Although both are never done, right? <laughs> Hi, Rosalinda and Susan, Elsie, Julie, uh, Elizabeth, yes, Dina. And then we have Martina and Marlene. Welcome, welcome, you guys. Thank you for joining me. Okay, you got your kits out, ready to go. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is separate your little check glass beads into the different colors. So you have six of each color. And I've actually um, done the little beaded links on these guys, but I'm going to demo that on a few of the beads for you. So I'm just, that was the first thing I did was cut out my little beads and got those organized. You have 25 inches of 20 gauge wire and this is the art metal color, which is that silvery from Vintage. Hello, Nicole and Terry. Welcome, mother and daughter creating. I love that. Hi, Amanda and Julie and Lee. Ellen, Jane, Landa. Welcome, welcome, you guys. Okay, so I love this color. It's like that gunmetal gray. Just a really great um, dark silvery finish. Almost like what tarnished, darkened um, sterling silver looks like. So yeah, really loving it. Hi, Barbara. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to be really economical with your 25 inches of wire here because you don't want to run out at the end. And these are little four millimeter fire polished check glass beads. And I have six of three different colors. So we have 18 of these little beads. And you're going to want to slip that on there. And I'm going to actually be using the 1.5 millimeter um, one-step looper from Vintage. 
and so that's going to help keep my loops nice and even. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm not going to take the wire to the guide. There's a little guide that you can stick. I'm going to put it right just a little tiny bit past the cutting area and then give that a squeeze and that makes your perfect little loop for you. And for some reason my loop isn't closed, so I'm just gonna close that. And now I want to cut. Now some people like to just cut and do their loop on this side, but I'm gonna use um, I'm gonna use the little one cutter, one one step looper. So I'm gonna cut about a half inch, just so that I have enough wire. You don't want to make it too small that it won't go around your piece. And you guys see how the loop is going this way? So the little curve is going around. I'm going to do it the opposite way so that these lay nicely as this little chain link. And so we got that one done. And I'm going to do all of these same way. What you can, what I recommend doing though, is do one of them where you have the loop just a little bit bigger on one side. So I'm going to pinch and that's going to give me my little loop. And you can find these on vintage.com or beadsmith carries them. And these are the 1.5 millimeter um, loops. And let's see. Jonalyn, this is your first time using your looper. I do recommend get out some practice wire and try a few times to get a feel for where you want to place your um your little beads. So this one I'm going to cut and I'm actually going to this is the one I'm going to attach to the jump ring, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So I've cut off my little piece here. And I'm going to make my loop. And so one of these are going to have a slightly larger loop because we are working with a chunkier jump ring. And so I'll have five regular ones that are ready to go. So here's my five all ready to go. And then I have one of each one that has a slightly larger um, loop. Now I'm going to Rib. I'm going to do one more of these just since Joellen and maybe a few others are using this for the first time. I want to make sure you guys um, are really familiar with this one step looper tool because there is a little trick to it. And I'm going to make sure I talk you guys through that really carefully. Okay, so you don't, so if you're working with like um, a head pin, there's a little hole in there and you would stick your wire through that hole but since we're making little loops we don't need to do that we just need it to go just past the cutter and I'm going to go ahead and make the loop on that side and there is a little trick to getting um to getting good loops so your goal is to get your bead as close to this little notch as you can. So you see how it's nestled right, as close as I can get it right to this little piece of metal. And that is going to give you a nice uniform size loop. You want to make sure you don't put it too, too close. Because if you get it too close and your loop's too small, you can break your bead. And if you have it too far away, then you're going to have a larger loop than what you want. And so that's that's the little trick that I've found makes the best loops. And then if you have a piece like this, there's a little bit of slack here. All you need to do are grab your round pliers, your chain nose pliers. Just open it up a little and pull it down. Just see so you've made that loop just a little bit bigger 
but you've closed it um, you've closed it so that it's tighter to the bead so I opened it up pulled it down a little bit and closed it tighter to the bead so that there was less room in there okay good morning Wendy for watching from Canada that's nice welcome welcome Okay, now we're going to do the wrap of the focal bead. And I have my piece of wire left over, and this is why you want to be really economical with your um, little loops, because you have just enough. <laughs> so definitely practice a little bit so that you get a good feel for using to for making those little loops uniform and not using a lot of extra wire. I'm going to cut this in half and let's see I thought I had a ruler here but it's my ruler likes to run off well it's about three inches just so we know <laughs> okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this in about an inch and a quarter past the um, the bead and I'm going to bend these both up I'm going to bend this one forward just like that and twist it around two times nice and tightly on the bottom and I just use my fingers you can use your chain nose pliers if you want I'm gonna trim that off as close as I can and then, and if you guys have questions while I'm doing this, feel free to add your question into the comments and I will get to them. So here's my little link on there. And now we're going to do a double loop for this bracelet because we want to have a nice, sturdy, strong connection. So I'm going to wrap it around one time and now I'm going to open up the pliers and wrap it around again right next to the first loop so that they're nice and tight together and I'm going to grab onto the two loops and I'm going to wrap around this wire two to three times making that messy loop going down first and then back up towards the loop use my fingers. Sometimes that's just easier for me. Okay. I want to make sure I just use my pliers to push that little loop down so that they're both on the same plane. And you can see we have used every little bit of wire here. <laughs> so I'm going to trim this off and pinch that closed nice and tight. And now I have a little trick that I've learned. <laughs> I don't know why it takes me so long to come up with good ideas, but I guess better late than never. So I just want to have that in there nice and tightly. So it's not going to poke anyone or snag any clothing. So I'm going to pinch that in there. There we go. Okay. Now, you see that little bit of copper? It's copper wire. So it's copper wire with um, a coating on top of it. So I'm going to take my Sharpie here. And I'm just going to cover that little bit so that we don't have that little flash of copper and it just disappears on us. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's the little things, guys. Okay, now I'm going to repeat on the other side. So you want about an inch and a quarter. No, an inch and an eighth. That's what I would say that is. It's an inch, inch and an eighth. Okay, I'm going to press this up. I'm going to bring this one forward. And now I'm going to wrap it around 
two times nice and tightly. Trim it off. And close it up. And I'm going to turn it around. And I'm going to pull this, oops, forward. And then I'm going to do two loops, one right next to the other. And if you've never done this before, don't be afraid to just get out some practice wire and um, use, a, use a little extra junk wire or other wire that you have at home and give this a, a few practice turns on different, um, different pendants that you have just to give this a try before you commit with your, um, with your piece here. Okay, liking the way that looks, I'm going to trim off the end and pinch that in. Now when you're working with your piece, you don't want to scrape your bead because you can scrape the paint off with the sharp tools if you're not careful. Normal wear, um, that's not going to happen, but a sharp tool gouging into the bead most certainly can damage it. So be careful. Okay. Got my two little loops here on both sides, double loops. And I'm going to grab my Sharpie. And color that so that it's not showing. And so Lynn says she uses a Sharpie on the ends of leather cord, but I haven't used it on metal. That's a great tip, Lynn. Thank you for sharing that. Hi, Debbie. I'm glad you made it. Okay, now I'm going to take my little leaf, and you can just take this leaf and bend it with your fingers, and that's all we're going to do. And just take it. This is soft copper. You don't need to use any fancy tools. I'm just um, just pushing on it pushing down, I mean, push, yeah, pushing down with my fingers and up with my thumb and giving it a nice little curve. And because it's copper, you can do that. If you're using um, a brass component, you might want to pull out your hammer and hammer a little bit to flatten it, but that's all you have to do. Now I'm going to take my fuzzy 1.5 millimeter hole punch, metal hole punch, <laughs> So this is the 1.5 one, and I'm going to line it up on the center line of this leaf, and I want it to be not too close to the edge or the tip of it. So I think that's good. And you're going to just press it down, and then pull it off, and now you have your bracelet focal. Now before I go any further, I'm I'm going to, um, oh, I have a little extra, I don't want to get confused. I'm going to wrap up my little flowers here. And I've done all the flowers, oh, I've done three of the flowers with a simple loop, and then these ones are wire wrapped. So in your kit, you have four small leaves that are all one color. So on the yellow one, um, On the yellow one, you're going to have to, uh, on the yellow one, uh, sorry, on the cream one, it's going to be yellow. On the um, teal one, it's orange. And I don't have the other one out, but, oh, sorry, we have a question here. And um, Martina, you do not have a hole punch. Mm. So, let me... Just try something real quick for you. Do you have a um, a store nearby? <laughs> like, 
they have these hole punches at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, or Michael's in the jewelry section. They all carry these. Um, if you have a Dremel tool, you could use a 1.5 millimeter um, drill bit on your Dremel tool and drill a hole in. Or if you have this hand drill, it'll just take you a little bit of extra time, but you can just start drilling away and drill a hole with the little hand drill. A Dremel will be the easiest. You know, you place this on a piece of wood and then drill through. Make sure you have the 1.5 millimeter Dremel tool. Or um, you could use, you can get these at the hardware store. Okay, Nicole. That's a good idea too. Nicole says, take a small nail and hammer it lightly. Yeah, like a little um, picture framing nail. You could totally do that too. And so you might have to sand a little bit on the back to um, smooth out the part. Yeah, great question, Martina. There's three answers for you. So hopefully that helps. Um, you might just have to put all the other parts of your bracelet together and then come back and finish your metal piece later this afternoon. So sorry about that. Okay, so you have your four colors of one flower bead and you're gonna pull three of them aside and you're gonna do simple loops on three of these. So I'm going to set three of these aside and I like to work assembly line fashion. So I'm just gonna throw all of my beads on a head pin right now. And these are little ball head pins some of my favorites to use just because they're so stinking cute. Okay, so there I have those guys set aside and I have the three and I'm just going to do a simple loop on these three. And you can see when you're using a head pin, you're going to guide that wire through the hole that's on the back of your one step looper. Make sure your little bead is as close to the metal guide as you can get it without being too close because you don't want to break the bead. And there's my little loop. If it doesn't turn out perfectly, which sometimes it doesn't when you're working with bigger beads, just straighten it out with your pliers here. And make the loop nice and tight. Let me get that close up. There you go. The loopers work really well because they give you a nice. Oop. Well, this one, <laughs> my hole is a little too big. So I am just going to grab a. little bead here. If you have a kit, obviously you don't have extra beads. I've never had a hole bigger on there, but sometimes it happens. You could use a little spacer seed bead here. I'm just going to use a little O bead and make him a little bit fancier. just was not happy. Okay. I'm just going to form that little loop by hand. Or maybe he was too happy. You wanted to dance around and jump. All right. Now the last one I'm going to show just with um, the pliers in case you guys don't have a loop. So you're going to cut out, you know, a like three eighths of an inch and you're going to bend it so you can see I've bent the wire and then oh, this one's too big too. That's so weird. Okay. I've never had that happen before. Let me get 
me try and fix this. Which means finding another headphone. Oh, here we go. So, I'm going to do the same thing. Let me know if that happens to you guys with your kit. If it does, you can grab a, any little spacer that you guys have on hand. I'm going to use these little O beads. Or you could use a larger seed bead. That's really weird. <laughs> Guess the joy of cottage made, hand done check glass beads sometimes. They're a little challenging. Okay. And if you do have larger holes in your yellow beads, maybe just use your pliers to do bigger loops. I think that's the best thing to do so that your loop is big enough to hold your bead in there nice and tightly. I'm just going through each of these and straightening up the wire just a little bit. Yeah, Christine, what gauge is this head pin? I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's definitely the little yellow beads that are the problem because they have much larger holes in this little batch than I've seen in other ones. So now I'm going to take my other five beads. I'm going to bend down and make a little loop here. little loop got bent over so I'm just gonna straighten that up and I'm gonna make a loop on all of these cuz like I said I love working in assembly line fashion just goes much quicker for me Do the two larger flowers same way. Okay, and now we're going to grab the chain nose pliers and you're going to wrap around two times tightly underneath the loop. So once and twice. Let me make sure you guys can see that. In focus. Once, two. And now I'm going to wrap around on top of the first two loops, heading back up towards the big loop. And I'm going to use every little bit of this wire, the head pin here and close that up, pinch it. <laughs> I fight with it, guys, because it's like not a natural way of holding things. I don't have it right up to my face like I normally would. So test the head pins before cutting wire in case the hole is too big. Elsie, that is a great tip. Thank you. All right, I'm going to wrap around tightly two times, going towards the flower. And then on top of those first two wraps, you're going to wrap going back up towards the loop. This one I'm going to cut off so I don't have to chase that end around quite so far. Hmm. 
fighting with the head pins today. Okay, there we go. And three more to go. I'm gonna do this as quickly as possible. Now that you guys know the drill, going down two times tightly towards your flower, and then two times up towards the loop to the end of your wire. And then pinch that close nice and tightly. And repeat two more times. How are you guys doing? How's it going? Are you working along or are you just watching? Let me know. I'm curious. Are you guys going to watch until the end of the video and then put it together and rewatch? It's kind of what I have to do when I make jewelry watching a video. I'm the kind of person that needs to stop the video and watch them after I watch them do it and then get it done. <laughs> it takes me a few times to have things sink into my brain. Okay, last one here. Just closing this guy up, pinching it closed, okay so I have all my flowers, I have, how it's going to go are, the two big ones are going to go on the end of the clasp and the, these little guys are going to go on the end with the toggle. And the toggle is going to be the side, the toggle bar is going to be the side with the flowers. And then our three yellows are going to go in the middle here. So that's how it's going to go. You got your two big flowers with your O. Then all of your little guys are going to go in the middle. These guys are going to go next to your bead. And then we have these little guys are going to come down here at the other end with your toggle bar. So let's go ahead and put everything together and then we'll come back and do the knotting. So again, I got these all out of order. <laughs> I was a nervous beater and moved things around. So you want to grab your one with the biggest loop so that can be the top of each one. All right, and now I'm going to just open and close these little links and put them together. And I'm going to do this nice and quickly. So some of you are walking along, we're working along. Some of you are watching. Good. <laughs> Wendy, you're a first, uh, you're a watch first person too. Yeah. Yeah, there's something zen about watching all of these um, little pieces come together, isn't it? So just opening and closing these not too far, just enough to get the wire through. Make sure you close it up nice and tight. If any of you have ever made rosaries, this is exactly the same technique. These little beaded chains. And I actually feel like this is my big one. I got an extra one. All right, now I'm gonna do my yellows. Starting off with the link that has the biggest uh, loop. Oh, helps if I'm in the camera. And just throwing these together real quick. 
most important important part is just making sure you have the loops closed up nice and securely again. Okay, and now we're ready to do the third color. Oh, Brenda, you love making the beaded chains. They are fun, aren't they? Good uh, mindless activity to do while well, you have a, a movie playing on the background. <laughs> it's the kind of work I like to do when uh, I don't really need to use my full attention. Okay, now this one wasn't closed all the way so I'm going to just take a second and make sure those are closed nice and tightly and the last one all right I'm going to Grab the 9.25 millimeter jump rings. So these are the two bigger jump rings in your kit. They're the one that have the etched texture. And I'm going to open these up with two chain nose pliers. And of course you're opening side, I mean, front to back like that. And now I'm going to all of these on and I'm realizing we probably need to make our loop bigger on the other side too. We'll see how it goes. Maybe they're big enough on their own. If not, I may have to adjust my loops a little bit. Does it matter what order you pick, put these in? Um, I like to put the color that I want to have show off the most in the middle just because as it naturally lays, that's what's gonna happen. Oops, I forgot one of my links. Now, if you need to lose a little bit of length on here, you could omit one, um, one of these little guys and that will make you a little bit shorter and then I would maybe take off a flower too if you need it to be a little bit shorter. Okay, now I'm going to open this one and slip my three beaded chains on. Making sure my yellow stays in the middle. And also, you want to make sure that these aren't um, twisted around. So just take a second and make sure these are all laying flat. By these, I mean the little chains that your beaded chain isn't twisting around. So make sure all the links are going in the right direction. Ooh, see how that one right there is twisted? Maybe you can see. Um, so I'm going to take this off and make sure none of the little beaded links are twisting up. and that will help it lay better as you wear it. Okay. 
There we go. Now I'm going to close this up. Make sure you close it nice and tight. And now on the end here, I'm going to use the six millimeter copper jump ring that's the rope kind. And I'm going to open it up. I'm going to slip this on. And I'm going to slip on my clasp here. And now I have my two big flowers and I'm going to slip those on too. And then close it all up. So you can grab it nice and tightly on both sides and close. Okay, so that's one side of our uh, bracelet done. And oh, I'm gonna have to open this up again on this side and slip on my um, my dogwood charm. It's a good sign when you can't find the opening again. It means you really closed it up nice and tightly. <laughs> okay, here we go. So when you guys are making this, go ahead and slip your dogwood charm on there before you close it up the first time, and then you won't have to do that again. Again, because this is where you want to slide on your three little yellow flowers. Or whatever of the three flowers you have for your kit. Okay, now this other side we're going to grab we have an eight millimeter brass jump ring, uh, nice and smooth. And then on the other end, we're going to use one of those six millimeter rope jump rings. Oh, and before I go any further, what we're going to need to do is grab the loop on this guy and turn it so that the loop is facing um, forward. So instead of having the loop going front to back, it's going left to right. And that will make sure our bracelet's laying the right way. I'm going to open this up, slip on my jump ring. And close it up nice and tight. Which isn't easy because I'm getting old. <laughs> All right. Now on the other side, I'm going to add my six millimeter jump ring. And I want to make sure I close this one really tight. Don't want to see any seams in between. this is the side you're going to do your um, knotting on. And now I'm going to take my little piece of waxed linen. This is four ply waxed linen that we're using. And I'm going to fold it in half. And I think it's 10 inches is what we have here. So 10 inches of four ply. I'm going to thread it through the jump ring, open up my loop, pull my two strands through, and then pull it down tightly to make the lark's head knot is what we're going to have here at the beginning. 
and now I'm going to tie another knot with both the threads. Just a simple knot here. And push those down nice and tight. Now you can see on here, I'm gonna have one thread going through the bead and one thread, thread on the out one, outside. Elsie, thanks for letting me know the camera's out of focus. I was so in depth into what I was doing, I wasn't watching. <laughs> the large jump rings, um, these big ones right here, Christine, we sell ones that are nine millimeter. They're just a little bit smaller, so they, they would work too. If not, you can find those at vintage.com, you guys. Okay, you're going to slide your flower through. Pull it down as tight as it will go to the knot and then you're going to tie a simple knot on the side of the flower. Push the two strands down very tightly and now separate the strands and repeat again with your next flower. down nice and tight and tie a knot. You see I'm going around my finger and then pulling the two strands through the uh, loop here and then pushing down on that knot as I'm pulling it nice and tight. Okay, now it's time to grab our um, toggle and we have two jump rings and we're going to attach one of the jump rings directly to the toggle okay so I have too many things laying down here that's why it keeps going out of focus it's trying to focus on the table for you guys instead of what's here in my hand I apologize for that Go ahead and close this up nice and tight. And you're going to grab the second one. And you're going to throw on your three flowers on this one. And attach it to the last jump ring on your toggle. And go ahead and close this up really tight. Okay, and now the last thing we're going to do is the knot here on the bottom. And I'm going to, I'm tying onto this bottom jump ring and I'm going to slide it through one side and then I'm going to loop it through, not loop it through, string it through the jump ring on the other side and I'm going to pull this nice and tight until that jump ring is right next to the last knot that I made and I'm going to tie a knot with both of these just like that and I'm going to flip this over And I'm going to tie a knot on this side. So you're just tying a knot with the two threads and then I'm going to flip it over and do one last one on the back here. And because we're using the wax linen, um, you won't need to glue or do anything the wax kind of adheres to itself so we won't need to do anything and now I'm going to do one extra little knot just tying those two together in a knot and now I'm going to flip this over 
I had a pair of scissors. Oh, here they are. <laughs> I'm going to give this guy just a little haircut. And then untwist them to give it a little bit of a, a fringe look. And guys, that's my finished bracelet. Easy to do. Um, this design is eight and a half inches wide, so it fits my big um, wrist. If you want it to be a little bit smaller, I would recommend if you want it to be like a half inch smaller, you could um, take off two of these these little guys, or if you needed it even smaller, take off two of these little guys on the end, and then the flower, and that will probably give you something closer to six and a half. And of course, you could actually pull out a ruler and measure that to make sure <laughs> before you commit anything. All right, do you guys have any questions? Let me know. Um, all right, so Melissa, Great question. She missed the first part. Is there a kit? There was a kit. The kit is sold out. And so um, I will add on my blog. I'll put the link to this video and the supply list. And so we sell almost everything on our website except for the fire polish um, beads. You can get those at Beads to Live By or your other favorite bead store. Yeah, the kits are sold out. So every month, um, every month we do a kit of the month and then we do this create along at the end of the, the month. The next month is going to be in conjunction with the Great Bead Extravaganza. So our project is going to be on a weekend. It's going to be it's July 24th. And this is our kit that we have for that. And those are available for pre-order right now. So you can grab one of those on the website. We do have lots of the dogwoods and anything that I don't have on here, uh, we can, I will post later. I know I have these sold out, but I have them in brass on the website. And then I have a few more of these. So I will add those to the website today too. And then um, make sure I have the clasps on there too. So if it, if you don't see all the pieces yet, give me an hour or so, and I'll have everything that we have available up on the website. Uh, we had had some inventory pulled off to the side before we put back into the website that we used for kit making. But we definitely have all of the uh, dogwoods in stock in every color, which I think we have six colors of them quite a few. So if you want the next kit, that's going to be for the Great Beat Extravaganza, which will be June, uh, excuse me, July 24th at 1245 Eastern Standard Time. So it's a Sunday afternoon. Of course, you can watch any of these videos anytime on Facebook or YouTube. Martinez asks, what hole punch did you recommend? What size? It's 1.5 millimeter, Martina. So 1.5 millimeter is what you need. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget we have just a few more dates left for our June color challenge in our Humble Beads VIP party group. So if you're not a member, jump over there and join us. All you have to do is create a piece of jewelry inspired by our color challenge. And then I will pick a winner for the... Um, for the month at the first of uh, the following month and that's for a $50 gift certificate we pick one random winner all right guys I will go through and read and see if you have any other comments on here so uh, we have beads and the kits for next month's project at humblebeads.com and then of course on Friday I will see you here for our, our coffee break at 3 p.m. where I'll be sharing what's new here uh, on Humble Beads. All right. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments and I will go back through and answer your comments. I will go ahead and add the supply list 
and the video link to the blog on humblebeads.com and I'll share that link on the um, Facebook page here for you guys so you don't have to go searching for that. I'll share it here when it's up. And then we do have beads on the website but I'll put a little um, link that has all of the beads that I used from today's project that are available on the website. So there'll be a little bit of easier shopping for you guys. And oh, I forgot to show you guys one last thing. I don't know if I even have a photo of it on here. Oh, I do. All right. So we are doing the made to order items and I have some of my designs that we have available in a few different florals, but we also did this batch of Van Gogh pieces. And so we have his almond blossoms, irises, st uh, sunflowers, and starry, starry nights. And so if you guys are interested in those, we're doing a six week lead time for me to order to give Jesse plenty of time so that he doesn't, um, doesn't disappoint anyone because oh, you can only do so much filing in a day. So <laughs> if you guys want to grab some of those made to order items, we'll be taking, um, made to order items uh, requests through the week and then at the end of the week they will no longer be available or until they sell out because we've only done a certain amount for each one so you guys that's all the news for today that's everything I have to share yes have a productive day you know I like that that's definitely <laughs> that's today for sure all right hopefully you guys get to get out and get some sunshine too take care thanks for joining me and um Are the Earrington pieces able to be used as a skinnier bar bracelet? Stephanie asks. Yes, uh, Stephanie, they are used, um, I mean, they're made with exactly the same gauge of metal. So they are very, um, very sturdy. And you could just use your thumb and finger to bend it a little bit like a bar. Or you could, if you have like a rubber mallet, you can bend it around the rubber mallet to make it more of that bracelet shape but they're pretty tiny so you might not even need to bend them at all all right thanks guys i'll talk to you later and don't forget to um ask any questions i will definitely come back and check later if you